Rich, I have a question, which is um, what attribute that you honed on the teams that you thought would be valuable when you left and joined civilian life turned out to be yeah. not yeah. useful? And conversely, what attribute that you honed on the teams did you think would have no application in the real world and you found it actually was really important? That's a great question. Yeah, I'm going to answer the second one first because it's easier. <laughs> um, and that is the one that you hone so much, and it's probably what I miss the most about the teams, is humor. Because you realize and you recognize the power of humor in challenge and stress. Every high-performing team I've ever encountered, ever, in whatever environment, has at least one class clown. The person who makes a joke and makes people laugh when things are bad. And laughing, as we know, it's an involuntary response. And as soon as we laugh, we get hit with dopamine. This feels good, keep going. Endorphins, hey, I'm masking pain, that doesn't feel that bad. And then um, oxytocin, I'm bonding, right? And so the story I usually tell on this, which you guys will appreciate, is uh, surf torture in, in SEAL training, which for your audience, it's when you as students lock arms and you walk out to about ankle or knee deep in the surf zone, turn around and lay back and the water crashes over you and then recedes and crashes over. The coldest thing you'll ever do, especially in Southern California where the water's like, I don't know, low 60s. And you do that and many, many people quit. But during that evolution, oftentimes the instructor will drive a van onto the beach and jump out with a megaphone and say, okay, for anybody who quits right now, I have hot chocolate and donuts and blankets in the van. Anybody who quits, kind of like the survivor moment. And we get a lot of people quitting, right? And I remember that happening in my hell week. I was in the surf zone, I was getting surf and the guy did that, instructor did that. And next to me, the guy next to me to my right pipes up, he yells, he's like, hey, do you have any chocolate glazed donuts? Because if you don't have any chocolate glazed donuts, I'm not quitting, okay? Now, he said that and I burst out laughing. And he burst out laughing. We're both laughing, okay? I immediately knew he was going to be okay. He's not going to quit. I immediately knew I was going to be okay. I was not going to quit. I looked to my left. The guy next to me, under my left, stone cold face. I mean, didn't even hear the joke. He was lost in his pain, okay? I said to myself, that guy's not going to make it. Well, sure enough, two minutes later, he quits, okay? What happened during that moment, right? He made, my buddy made the joke, who I'm still friends with to this day, right? He made that joke. Immediately, I get hit with dopamine. Hey, this is fine. Keep going. This is good. Endorphins this doesn't feel that bad, right? And then oxytocin, this guy and I, he, we're together, we're bonded, right? So laughter and humor is a hack into anything and can be applied to really life, I think. So that's the one I probably hyper-developed in the teams that I realize is, is very applicable. The one that I probably had a lot of that you don't need as much of in the real world is situational awareness. Situational awareness is this idea of vigilance, really. How much do I notice about my environment? Listen, I'm the guy who walks around New York City, and I, I notice the hands of people. I notice the dark alleys. I notice Dude, you're my favorite guy in the world to walk into a bar with. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I just calm down. I like it's the, <laughs> the only time I don't have to do that. I'm like, Rich has got this. I don't have to do yeah. this. Cool. However, too much. When you're overseas, when you're in the combat zone, you have to be hyper vigilant. I mean, you're you're vigilant about everything. And when you get home, this is where sometimes PTSD shows up in in veterans because they come home from this heightened state of vigilance and they come home and they and it, and it exists still so they're noticing everything and there's this a little bit of a paranoia that comes with that uh, if you can't learn to let go and know it's okay i don't have to worry about the dude who's walking you know three feet behind me i don't have to worry about the person across the street who looks sketchy i can let go of some of that you become much more relaxed you become much more stressed so that's one of the things i've had to tamper down a little bit and just recognize it If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Music